homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today it's time to start our fall garden. Now, in our garden this year, it's not uh, progressed very well. Uh, I started too late, out of my control. Uh, so the garden's just not doing too good. Uh, we had a dry spell, almost like a, a semi-drought, and then all at once it's all wet. So right now the garden is pretty wet, but I want to start the fall garden. Now I planted the fall, I plant the fall garden August the 1st. We're here in zone 6, and according to the USDA, uh, our first frost date is November the 1st. But, it's quite possible we could have a frost October the 15th, okay? Or October the 5th used to be our frost date. So, we could have a frost anywhere from October the 5th to November the 14th is the longest I've been to have a first frost date. So, if you plant on August the 1st, that gives you September the 1st, October the 1st, and November the 1st. That gives you 90 days. Uh, will all those days be frost free? No. So you'll want to plant cold hardy crops. And what we plant uh, are cold hardy crops. Uh, this year we're going to try and mix it up a little bit. Uh, first off, we plant turnips. Okay, this is our turnip seed. Uh, turnips make in, in between 60 and 90 days. Uh, Rutabagas are the same way. We'll plant uh, American Purple Top Rutabaga, which is basically a yellow turnip. Uh, I haven't had any luck growing rutabagas yet here. Okay, this is the uh, second year, but it's only the second year I've planted rutabagas here in uh, here at College Hill Farm. So this year we're going to give rutabagas a try. Again, they're 60 to 90 days. Now, if it goes 90 days and you have a frost, well, rutabaga and turnips are both cold hardy. They'll take a frost right up to Christmas. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the time, I don't like to even eat a turnip until after a frost because they're bitter, uh, or at least they're bitter to me. So I like a turnip to be sweet, so I wait till after the frost to harvest any. So it'll be after our first frost, and then I'll give it about a week, and then I'll start harvesting turnips. And we'll harvest turnips all the way up to January. Just depends on how cold it gets, but they'll hold just fine right up into Christmas. Uh, the next thing we'll plant, of course, we're going to do turnips and rutabagas. Next thing we'll plant is radishes. Radishes are only about a 40-day thing, so we'll harvest these radishes kind of early. And uh, I don't know how many we'll harvest to begin with. I might let some go to the seed so I can have seed for next year. Uh, the other stuff, uh, turnips won't go to seed till the spring. So you'll have to wait the spring to get seed from your turnips. But radishes can go to seed before wintertime gets here. Next, kale. We'll plant kale and you can harvest kale all winter long. At least here in, in zone six. Uh, we're able to harvest kale all winter long. So I'll plant kale and uh, that'll be out there for the winter. We can start harvesting kale. Again, kale's just like turnips. I don't like to harvest it until it's had a frost on it. Otherwise, to me, it tastes bitter. Next, this year we're going to plant beets. This is a Detroit Red. Okay, this is a the normal beet that we plant, but we're going to spice it up a little bit this year. Uh, we're going to do one called uh, Tall Top Early Wonder. It's a dark purple beet. And then we're going to do the uh, Early Wonder Tall Tops, which is a dark red beet. And then, of course, the Detroit beet. Now, beets will be ready 55 to 70 days, depending on on the variety. I think most of these are going to be 55 days. This one's 52. So beets 
are in the 50 to 60 day mark. So we're well within that. If we plant them the 1st of August, well, this isn't August 1st. This is the 30th, and I'll explain to me, of July. Uh, so we'll get these beets in, and we'll be able to start harvesting them and put some in can a few maybe this fall. Now, carrots. We're also going to plant carrots. Uh, we'll plant Imperator, uh, Danvers, and uh, what do we got? Oh, and little finger carrots. Okay, all of these, we'll plant all of these, and they're about 75 days. So August the 1st, September, October the 1st would be 60 days. So 15 more days, so October the 15th, the carrots ought to be ready. But it all depends on how long it takes these carrots to germinate. Carrots can germinate in 10 days, 15 days, or 20 days. Okay, so these might say 75 days, but they might take 90. Does that make sense? So it just depends on when frost hits. Now, next, what we're going to do, and I've never done this before, okay? I've never done it this way before. Uh, I've planted fall broccoli, and I've planted fall cabbage and stuff, but I have never sown it from seed right in the garden, and that's what we're going to do this year as an experiment. I've got some cabbage here that, uh, that in looking at this, it's 60 to 80 days, so this one's, this one's 110 days, 90 to 110 days. But you got to remember, cabbage is frost resistant. So a little frost ain't going to hurt it. So we're going to put cabbage in. This is called Earliana. It's a earlier cabbage. And then this is late flat Dutch. Late flat Dutch is always done late. Now, I've always planted these in containers and then transplanted them in the garden for the fall. But I've never done it this way. I'm going to do them, I'm going to sow them like I sow turnips or anything else. I'm going to sow them this year. Same way with the broccoli. I'm going to sow uh, rapini, which is a kind of a broccolini. It doesn't make a head per se, a great big head, but you can uh, clip it like a head. Uh, clip the stalks and, and eat them. So we're going to give that a shot. And I'm also going to try and... And I say I'm going to try these. Look, I didn't pay a ton for this, okay? I think uh, this one, it listed as $1.89, but I think I only paid $0.50 cents for this package. Of course, it's uh, 2019, okay? It's a 2019. This one right here, and this is a, a Green Sprouting Calabrese from Livingston Seed. And then Sun King Hybrid, uh, this one was packaged in 2019 as well. So, 20, 21, 22 is three years old. These are only good for about four years, so if I don't use them, I lose them. So, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the garden, and I'm going to sow them. So, we'll have something totally different in the garden as an experiment to see how it does. Now, all these seeds... You have to plan for your garden every year. You have to plan for it. That means you have to figure out what seeds you're going to need at the beginning of the year. Because if you buy seeds locally, which I buy seeds locally a lot, uh, if you buy seeds locally, you have to know what you're going to plant. Okay? I knew I was going to plant kale. I bought my kale this spring, my kale seed, because you know that uh, I had shoulder surgery and I was out of the commission, so I lost some seed. So I bought kale seed, and uh, of course I had saved my, that's radishes, I bought radish seed. I had saved turnip seed, so I was good there. Uh, I bought rutabaga seed, and then I've got more turnip seed here. This is old turnip seed. I don't know if any of that will come up. I'll just throw it all in the pot. And then this is turnip seed that I bought four or five years ago. So I'll throw that part of that in the pot and we'll see how many turnips we get. So the beets I bought this spring because I wanted to try some different beets. So I bought these this spring.
50 cents a package. Okay, so now, everything here is very, very wet. Uh, it's July the 30th. And, uh, of course, 30 months, 31 days in July. So tomorrow's the 31st. But it's Saturday, July the 30th. Now, this video probably won't come up until the 14th or 15th of the month. So, But uh, if I plant this stuff July the 30th, well, that's a couple of days before August the 1st. I shoot for August the 1st. That's the, that's the day that I like to plant the fall garden, August the 1st. But for the next five days, it's going to rain. And then I have to wait two more days to be able to plow a little bit. Because what you want to do, in August, I have plowed these spots. And uh, so what you want to do in August is you want to plow just before you plant this stuff because most of the weeds are not going to germinate. Because they've been plowed and plowed and plowed and plowed. Okay, so these will not have the the summertime competition that other plants do. Does that make sense? They won't have nearly the competition. So these will get in the ground without all that competition and then we can have those uh, easy to harvest when the time comes. Now, let's go out in the garden and get some uh, stuff in the ground. And this is how I save my seed, just in a tote. See you in the garden. Okay, here I am in the garden. Uh, the ground is too wet to deep plow. It didn't rain yesterday, but it rained not last night, but the night before. So, it didn't rain yesterday, and it didn't rain last night, and it didn't rain today. It's going to rain, looks like, pretty soon. So, it's about 7 o'clock in the evening in the afternoon, or I don't know how you want to say it, 7 o'clock p.m., and I'm going to plow this. Well, it's so wet that if I try and deep plow, I might get stuck. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in third gear. Normally I plow in first gear or second gear, and that lets the tiller sink as far as it can go. Today I'm going to plow in third gear. So if the tiller just goes, oh, two or three inches deep, all I want to do is kill any weeds that are out there. Uh, that's what I want to accomplish. <clears throat> and then we'll go from there. surprised this isn't muddier than what I thought it was going to be but now it's time to put in this is the first we have two two fall garden beds this is the first one it's a four eight 12 feet wide 100 foot long this is the first bed 
And what do I put in the first bed? Well, I put in carrots, kale, turnips, and beets. Okay, four things. Carrots, kale, turnips, and beets. So, I'm going to go ahead and get those going. Okay, I've put all my, pa all my carrots in one package. I've got uh, kale, beets, all the beets, I put them in one package. And then, oh, my back, turnips. Now, normally, I take a bucket or something, and I'll put these in it and mix them with the dirt and then sling it all. The dirt's too wet to do that. So what I'm going to do is I will just go down this row, putting a little bit in my hand and flinging it. And what that'll do, and I'm going to stay out of the plowed dirt because my feet would be clobs. Okay, I'm surprised that the tractor tars aren't covered. But I'll go down this row just flinging as far as I can fling these. And I'll start with the carrots, <clears throat> and then I'll switch to something else, and then something else, something else. And then as I come back up through here, I'll fling the rest of it. Okay, I'm going to get at that. Now, the question is whether will I cover them. Now, I'll let the rain cover them. Okay, that's this bed. Okay, I went ahead and, and uh, plowed up our uh, second fall garden bed. It's uh, about 14 feet wide, okay, and 100 feet long. Right here are the beans we planted five days ago. Look at that. These little buggers grow. I love these six-week beans. Uh, when I'm done, I really don't want to walk in the mud. So I've plowed and left room so I could walk in ground that's uh, had the time to sit and dry out a little. So when I'm done, since it's not going to be pretty for the next week or so, I'll go ahead and run a row beside these with the tiller on both sides and then the weeds will be cut out of these. So let's go ahead and get ready to start planting this bed. Now what am I going to plant in this hill garden bed? Well in here I'm going to plant cabbage and broccoli. Okay you saw the varieties. I'm also going to plant uh, purple top rutabagas I'm going to plant rapini uh, it's a kind of a broccoli rob kind of thing and then I'm going to plant radishes I'll probably start with the radishes so that they're up here close where I can just tend them and, and uh, pick them because they're the first things that are going to come in so I'll probably start with the radishes, and then I'll plant everything else. I'm going to do it just like I did the uh, lower, the uh, flat garden, but I want to leave room to plow by my beans that are here. I showed you the beans there. I want to leave room to plow by those beans, so I'm going to throw these a little bit farther away. Uh, I plowed on in here in one place, but I'm going to sow this more in the middle than on the fringes so that uh, 
I'm not plowing up any of my fall garden to keep the weeds out of my beans. So let's get started at that. And you want to disperse these, you want to sling them so that they're way apart from one another. You don't want them sitting on top of each other. You want to make them go far away from each other. And if they're littler seeds, you put less of them in your hand. Okay, that's got the fall garden sown. Now, when these come up, I'll come through, maybe, and give them a shot of miracle Grow. Uh, yes, I use miracle Grow. I'm not an organic farm. But, I'll give them a shot of miracle Grow. They won't need a lot. My ground's pretty fertile. Whew. Now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every two weeks, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Now, we try and upload every week. Sometimes we don't make it. But when we do, we upload on Sundays. Now, with that being said, time for me to get on to the next thing. <laughs> 